Hello, boys and girls. Today is Thursday, which is also known as Friday Junior. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to work just a little bit more on asking and answering questions for um, informational text. So let's go ahead and look at our PowerPoint. So again, today the standard is ask and answer questions to demonstrate understanding of text referring explicitly to the text as the basis for answers. So all that means is that we're going to be able to ask and answer questions um, by looking back in the text to find those answers. So it says, today I will practice sorting thick and thin questions and use my knowledge of answering questions to read a passage and answer questions attached to them. Here's our I can statement. Uh, is same as yesterday. It says, I can an ask and answer questions about an informational text and refer to the text for my answers. So we're going to be able to look back. So let's go ahead and talk about what type of questions we had when we were doing uh, stories. So with stories, we had strong questions and we had simple questions. And we knew that strong questions were questions that, you know, made you think harder and you had to dig deep into the text to try to figure out the answer. And simple questions were questions that, you know, you had, you, you didn't have to do much work to find the answer. You could look at a picture and answer it. You didn't even have to read the story to answer the question. Well, for informational text, we have two different kinds of questions. They're similar to strong and simple, but they're called thick and thin. So what are what is a thick question? Well, a thick question is a question that you really have to use your brain and look deep into the text to find out. Remember, strong questions are the same thing, but these thick questions are for informational texts. So questions that make you think to find the answer and they are not easily answered. Um, these are the same as strong questions about stories, which means that our simple questions are the same as thin questions. So thin questions are questions that you can answer by looking at a picture or without, you know, reading any text. Sometimes you might just know the answer and sometimes you don't even have to read the story to figure out the answer to it. So we're going to look at this picture and then what we're going to do is we're going to decide whether the questions on the next slides are going to be thick or thin questions. So take a second to look at this picture of the shark. Look at the things that you notice, look at things the shark is doing, look at the things around the shark. Just take a second to look at it. And then we're gonna start with our next questions. So this question says, have you ever seen a shark? Well, the first thing that I'm gonna ask myself is, is this question thick or thin? Well, I'm gonna ask myself, does this question make me think? Um, does it make me use my brain? And you know, I'm gonna have to dig deep I might not know the answer to this question. No. So this answer, the answer to this is that this is a thin question because you don't have to read anything to answer this question. This is solely your personal. This question here says, what seas can a shark be found in? Well, again, I'm going to ask myself, what's a thick question? A thick question is one that makes me use my brain or I'm going to have to read to figure it out. And the thin question is one that, you know, I just know off the top of my head or I don't have to read anything. So pause this video and see if you can figure out and see if you can decide whether this, this question is going to be a thick question or a thin question. And then the answer is that this is a thick question because, you know, I personally don't automatically know which sea sharks can be found in. So I would have to read to figure out which oceans that you'll find sharks in. This question says, what makes a shark want to attack? So again, I'm gonna ask myself, is this thick or thin? Do I have to really think about this or do I already know the answer to this? And I'm gonna say that this is also a thick question because I'm gonna have to read um, to figure out why sharks attack. You have to use your brain and dig deep. You could say the shark just wanted to attack because it was hungry, but that might not be true. So we'll have to read to figure out all the ways sharks attack, or the reasons sharks attack. This last question says, is a shark cool? Pause this video and see if you can decide whether it's a thick question or a thin question based off of what you've learned about thick and thin questions. And this is a thin question because it does not require you to read any text to answer it. 
So we're going to work on an assignment together before I show you how to access your assignment in Canvas. So the first one, the directions are, you are going to be dragging these questions over off to the side into the thick question or the thin question, depending on whichever you think it is. So this question, this first question says, what time does the sun rise? Well, I'm going to ask myself, does this question make me think deep into anything? Or can I just, you know, answer this question without even, without even reading anything? I can. So I'm going to say that's a thin question. This next question says, do you want to go to outer space? Well, again, you know, this question, I don't have to read anything for. And it's not going to make me think hard. That's simply a yes or no answer. So that's also going to be a thin question. What kind of jobs does a construction worker do? Now, this is a thick question because construction workers can have tons of different jobs. You know, you can be a cement pourer. You can be an architect. You can be all kinds of things for construction workers. How many people live on Earth? Now this answer, this one is a little more confusing because you can just Google this and you know, it can, Google can tell you the answer immediately. So I'm gonna say that this is a thin question because you don't really have to read much to answer that. And the last one says, what color is the sun? So this is also gonna be a thin question because we don't have to read anything to see the color of the sun. So the second part to this assignment, what you're going to do is you're going to read um, a passage and then you are going to be answering some questions. So let's go ahead and start reading. What's energy? The definition of energy is the ability to do work. Energy is everywhere. It's all around. Even if something is not moving, energy is still there. If an object are, is at rest, it has potential energy. If an object is in motion, it has kinetic energy. Objects that are not moving may not look like they have energy, but they are full of energy. The energy is called potential energy because it is stored inside the object waiting to be released. Something has to happen to the object in order for, oh, what happened? In order for it to release its energy, such as human force or heat. The swing set shown below has swings that are not moving. That does not mean that they don't have energy. The energy is just stored inside of it, waiting to be released. Once the swings are moving, the energy becomes kinetic. If objects are in motion, they have kinetic, kinetic energy. The swings energy will be released when humans sit on them and begin to swing. People, animals, plants, and objects can all have kinetic energy if they are in motion. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our questions and see what we're going to be answering today. So this question says, where can energy be found? Well, remember, for answering questions, the first thing we do is we restate the question so that we are writing in complete sentences. So I'm going to say energy can be found in... And then we're going to look back at our text to see if we can see what, uh, where energy is found. And I remember that this is going to be in the uh, first and last paragraph. So the last paragraph says, People's, people, animals, plants, and objects all have kinetic energy if they're in motion. But the first one says, energy is everywhere. It's all around. So in my answer, I'm going to say energy can be found in everything. It is all around. This next one says, underline the text evidence and explain what a part of the text help you find the answer to number one. So we can't underline on here, but what I'm going to type is that I found the answer in paragraph one. So the part of the text that helped me find the answer to question one was the first paragraph. Okay, it says explain the energy in a bouncing basketball. 
So a bouncing basketball is moving. So we're going to have to see if we can figure out what, ki what kind of energy is energy that is moving. Well, here in the second paragraph, it says, oh, excuse me, the first paragraph says, if an object is in motion, it has kinetic energy. Well, the basketball is moving, so the basketball has kinetic energy. So first we're going to restate the energy in a bouncing basketball is kinetic energy, E-N-E-R-G-Y, because it is moving. I have my period and I have um, a capital letter. So this fourth question says, underline the text evidence and explain what part of the text help you find the answer to number three. Well, like I said, we looked back to number the first paragraph and it says, if an object is in motion, then it has kinetic energy. So I'm gonna say the part of the text that helped me find this answer was paragraph one. It says that if an object is moving, then it has kinetic energy. And then we answered all parts of the question. So we're going to go to the last question. This last question says, what is the difference between potential and kinetic energy? Well, I can go ahead and tell you that this answer is going to be found here in this second paragraph. So it says objects that are not moving may not look like they have energy, but they are full of energy. The energy is called potential energy because it is stored inside of an object. So objects that are not moving have potential energy and objects that are moving have kinetic energy. So the difference, I'm restating the question, between potential and kinetic energy is that potential energy is stored for non-moving objects and kinetic energy is, oh, I'm not spelling stuff right. Kinetic energy is found in objects that are moving. And I added my period and I have a capital letter. And now I have answered all of these questions, every part of the question. Now I will show you how to access your assignment. So you're gonna go to your internet and you're gonna go to my.ncedcloud.org and then you're gonna sign in using that long number and your password, best 2020. You'll go into Canvas you're going to hit your home page and then you're going to go into reading since it's reading. Today is Wednesday, so you'll go into Wednesday and when you click that, um, your page is going to pop up and you will find the assignment with today's date on it. Today is um, the 10th. So you'll open it and what you're going to do is you're going to sort these first five questions into whether you think they are thick or thin questions. You're going to read about a dry place and you'll answer five questions about the dry place. And then when you're finished, you're going to hit the submit button so your teacher can grade it for you. All right, guys, good luck. Have a great day. And we will talk to you tomorrow, which is Friday. Bye.